So um, this is a rhetorical question every single time we ask it, but are there any anime fans in the house? Yeah. See, I knew it. I knew it. Why is it rhetorical? We watched anime last night in the van when we fell asleep. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Well, we're big anime fans too. This song is called Akira. <laughs> Welcome to Hello, This is the Doomed Show. I am Richard. Folks, this is very different. This is a, what I like to call moderately self-indulgent episode. I'm joined by Sam. Hello, Sam. Hello, everyone. I am Sam. And uh, Sam is my friend for many years. And he's also the drummer and singer and all-around hype man of gyro jets i i thank you i do prefer hype man more than drummer or singer as far as what gets printed on my title in record sleeves so i want that to kind of go forward um, i'm uh, i'm more of a white man <laughs> white white man white, 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 white. white i mean you are quite a quite a white whale i'm a translucent of help a, me of, of a lover the reason that two of the thirds of gyro jets are here is because on February 28th, 2022, it'll be the five-year anniversary of our album, You're Never Nothing. Yee. We don't know how it's been that long. I, but it, I know how it's been that it long. It also feels that long. So It really, it feels like, it feels like it's been twice that long, especially in the past couple of years. Um, our good pal Marky has since joined the band, but this is the old days when we had no bass players, just right. drums and guitar and the aforementioned hypeness and whiteness and wipeness <laughs> and love you can't forget you can't forget you are you are literally my white whale of affection <laughs> i would like you to harpoon me <laughs> I, I i i am doing it as, as we speak let me quote uh, upright citizens brigade hey stick it in the blowhole <laughs> so yeah we wanted to celebrate this album I still have some CDs left. I know people out there all hyped about compact discs, right? I think that's I think that's the new thing. That's cutting edge technology. <laughs> it's sweeping the nation. <laughs> but yeah, dude, we we freaking uh, self produced this freaking CD that I'm holding in my hands, and we're gonna start with the history, though. We're gonna get into this. So, Gyro Jets. This is um, also our 10 year anniversary as a band. Indeed it is. Which is even weirder. I don't know why I pa pa ooh. It's even weirder than the five years. Like, ten years is nuts. Right, yeah. I mean, especially, like, it, it's... I, it, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's, like, a... It's been a whirlwind of different life events in many yes. different capacities for both of us. <laughs> I think when I met you, it was a very different... It was starting to, like... I was starting to grow into my life, like, who I was going to be as, like, a person... Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like, and, and you guys were like, I feel like you were well into your journey, especially with like you and Lietta and where you guys were. It was yeah. like, I don't know. I feel like it was the creative outlet. I think we both needed to cr try to like oh, yeah. curb a lot of the excess <laughs> friction. I feel like we were feeling the year was 2011 and by like my journey at the time was just morbid obesity, which I'm still flirting with. Oh, whatever. But you, are, I was, you are literally half the man you used to be. I was a big boy at the time, you are. But, but so let's see. Our mutual pal, Ryan, 
was doing a film project for his class and he needed somebody to make sure that they didn't get kicked out of the library to film it. And since I worked at the library, they were like, he was like, Hey, could you uh, just stop by and like tell people we're cool or just make sure we, d we could get in the building. So I go there and of course y'all are in there set up filming this short movie that uh, we had this weird, we still have it. There's this weird booth in the library that looked like a, a diner booth. It's like the gangster booth, like at the back of a club. Like there's always like that coolest kid sits in the middle. <laughs> but because of the circular table, you can pee pee your pants and nobody knows maybe for a that's, few minutes. Maybe that's the, the problem that takes care of it. So because I've never actually seen the guy in the middle exit the booth and make everybody, I've never really seen that. He's, in a, he's in a puddle. Yeah. I mean. I was a, that was a weird that was an awesome uh, experience. I, I I have not acted that many times. It was just like a you know, a favor for a friend. He needed somebody for for I guess it was an art like some art school thing or art class thing. Well, I got involved in the zombie movie they made because mm -hmm. they made a horrible. It actually was the best one of all of the zombie movies because they made it real movie. The rest of the people were dicking around and had uh, clips from the first Borat movie in their video and then they would just do zombie sounds over the top of it like <laughs> it was the worst thing i've ever seen that was that was two and a half hours of sitting in a classroom watching like the least creative fucking nerds that is ever <laughs> at least yeah at least ryan had a whole script written it was like a they real did a like, zombie prom project. yeah yeah oh. it was awesome yeah. i had to wear a suit that's where i met a couple people anyway that's awesome so i walk in and you're doing your thing and yeah, I played a guy who had an uh, who had some psychosis, an imaginary friend that he needed to continue a particular relationship with. Like he didn't want to be like abandoned by his own imaginary That's friend. Awesome. And I'm trying to think of like how sad it, of a character that really was. Like what was like who hurt somebody to write a character that's so sad that his own imaginary friend is abandoning him? See, but all he has to do is go on a killing spree at the in the last reel, and you got an A24 artsy oh, horror movie. You You're well, done. I, I think it was a much more deft like i think i'm probably even misremembering the purpose of the character but i but it was it was like a it was a weird like everybody has their own mix of sadness and aspects of life like in their own way i think i remember ryan explaining that to me yeah so we talked a little bit and i think uh the next day or that night i added you as a friend on facebook folks there used to be this thing called friendster sexting. what did you say sexting sexting <laughs> We definitely were our own unicorns. So, and then I found out you're a drummer. And back in the day, now you can't find bass players. We were lucky to get Marky. Now bass players are hard to find. Sorry, bass players, if you're out there trying to join Gyro Jets. It's too late. Position filled. We got a stack of apps, but we're not even looking at them. She a stack of apps? Apps. Oh, yes. I mean, of I guess. You can, think of it like, you can think of it like that. <laughs> I do. So, on my outline, I've got. Uh, as far as how we came to be, I got all in all caps, bro meetings, comma, he heard I were a skin slapper. <laughs> I just, my, my mouth just made the weirdest sound when I laughed. I don't know. I hope the microphone got that. Yes. So I started interrogating you about drumming and you were in a, uh, I almost said rockabilly, but you were in a surf rock band. That's correct. Yeah. Tidal wave. And uh, you were not overly thrilled about being in that band not was, at first it was fine it was fine yeah but then you know there was just like you know you, you just you grow apart and then you know it's no it's no big deal i was in ladies of death row swimsuit calendar i've been in that band with nafa forever yep. and i think i had just started maybe playing keyboards in twisty chris and the pudding packs that part i can't remember the timeline a couple of practices but you and i jammed i would yep. drove, i drove out to uh land of lakes and we jammed mm -hmm. and it was awesome. And so we kept doing that. Yeah, I think I think at that point I had made my bedroom like a full like I'd, I'd put all the Foam. egg crates back on the yes. wall in my bedroom. Yeah. Yes. So it was like it was like a, a weird DIY, but oddly well sounding room. Yeah. And I was really I was really like amazed when you told me how long you'd been drumming at the time. And you were like, yeah, I've been drumming that long. And that my jaw dropped. I was like. How the hell are you this good? Like, this is amazing. So, luckily, you, yeah, you didn't that. know, you still don't know that you're too good for me. 
So I'm sticking around. Well, I'm writing a book on how to plateau for a decade. <laughs> so like, I don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel like I'm Is it the really Richard that Lynch different. Story? No, definitely not. I, I feel like when I feel like if anything, uh, you know, iron sharpens iron. I feel like you got me into the more like electronic aspects of things. And I feel like you have a depth of knowledge of music uh, in certain genres that I don't have. Yeah. So I feel like you're bringing that a lot of that to the table. And I think that helps, I don't know, facilitate like input from both of us in different styles. That's what's fun. You and I have a few things in common musically, like that we listen right. to, but it's like a huge gap. Like right. we, you have stuff, but I'm like, I, I don't know what that is. Right. Yeah. We fork <laughs> off in like very different directions, but we fork off together also. Mm, we're so. forkers. Yeah. We're going to fork each other. Yeah. We, we jammed and then we, we met at a gig. We were, you were playing. In the surf rock band, and I believe Nafa's band was playing, or something. Right. And we were watching this crazy progressive rock band. Rexer Trefkin. This Rex was at Skippers, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. this was at Skippers. Dude, that place is awesome. Which we never, Gyrojets have never played there. Ladies yeah. of Death Row, never played there. It's like this, know. our inn was this like Tuesday night's new band night. And we blew it. We didn't get to play it. So they'll probably never do that again. But anyway, we were like bonding over this prog rock band. Yeah, they were, they were so fun. Yeah. And that's like really got us going. And that's sometime in 2012, we were like, let's do a band. Yeah, let's just figure, you know, let's just jam and see what follows. Because we had jammed and we had a few little tunes that just kind of came I record everything. Out. Yeah. I record all that shit. Yeah. So I think that's what made it more, like, serious. Because, like, I had I had also, before Tide Wave or whatever, when I was just, like, um, learning drums and stuff, my roommate, Luke, and I had an act. And we had, you know, we didn't play too many. We didn't really play out anywhere or, um, you know, play to too many people. But we definitely just got the basics of like what it is to write a song and jam it out i mean we weren't like musically notating it or whatever like yeah. i mean you know we both took band back in the day and know how to like read music and luke just just to say in case he ever hears this shit luke is a fantastic guitar player yes, he is incredible like i was seeing him play i was like oh boy like i i would love to have him in the band but then i would just unplug my guitar and let him do it all yeah he's i feel so like good. i feel like he always has parts like he's a really proficient guitarist and he's a but he's like knows how to like settle on something and like i'll sit there and hem and haw about something yeah. like if i jam it out and it feels good that's fine but he always has like i find it hard to write and i feel like he doesn't have that issue as much <laughs> yeah. and like and he kind of helped exercise that jam muscle i feel like that has been so key in like writing our song yeah and i'm really i'm really bad about I'll come up with parts and write them down. And because I don't read music, I write down the, the notes of the chords and then flash forward three months later when I get that notebook back out and go, yeah, let's start that one over because I don't remember <laughs> what this is. So 2012, we start um, freaking uh, trading names back and forth. Right. You and I in, in Messenger trading right. band names. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and we came up with a few few gems. Um, I remember Faux City Locals. I, like, I still I still think that one is my my favorite. That's one gonna that be a song title. I still no matter okay. what. I still think that one's my favorite. That um, didn't get picked. Only Nero. Only Nero. Yeah. Um, uh, Rigid Parts. Rigid Parts. That was yours. Sure. Yep. Proud You're, Proud Papa. Was you always one. bring the the sexuality into the band. Do That's I? That rigid part well, right hey, there. Yeah. But I feel like half of our song names come from like little stupid jokes. Oh, like dude, we're gonna get into that. Yeah, when we get to the songs on the album. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I saw something today that was like the beauty of like Dungeons and Dragons, or half of it is like being misunderstood. Like when you say something at the table that sounds stupid or sexual, somebody makes a joke like, "Oh, huh, huh, I bet," like yep. you know something stupid. Like that's I feel like that's kind of the same way. Like we kind of like yes, anded ourselves into a band. <laughs> like, <laughs> so we played our first shows in the woods. The first show was. 420 2013 yeah 420 brother and uh we played with our buddies uh power cosmic with his luke and ryan and sean and, sean. and then we played uh, seven days later we played in the woods again <laughs> that was that was the death of my monotron auxiliary output <laughs> got unfortunately trashed, it, got it still trashed. works it still sounds good but the first gig in an actual nightclub june 28th 2013 at pegasus lounge with listen to this lineup Twisty Chris and the Puddin' Packs, Anti-Anthropics, Damn Silverback, and Before the Fire, 
the freaking corn band because they were new metal right. and the dude had a huge, but they were good. They had long, but hit that, that, with the dreads guy. That dude had the biggest freaking corn tattoo on his leg. It was, a, and he put his leg up on the monitor like, yeah. Right. I remember <laughs> that now. Dang. And that show I must was have blocked it out. Great. Well, we didn't go that was on a fun two. Right. Yeah. That must have also been why. But I remember enjoying Damn Silver back and They and, were great. And was it even, was it even anti-anthropics? Was it, wasn't it, was it just Marky it was, and, it was and the, Kyle? No, it was the full. It yeah. It was everybody. It was the full anti-anthropics. So huh. it was Kyle, Marky, Father Donahue, Donahue. I believe that was them. Oh my god! Because these kids—they were kids. They're like seventeen, eighteen, and they were smoking all these old dudes. Because we're all old and tired. <laughs> yeah, there, there wasn't too many people at that, that at that show that no, played no. that f- that fast type of punk. Like there wasn't any bands at that show that played that type of punk, like no. that fast. Like and it style. was it was a crazy night, and I danced my ass off for Twisty Chris because that's the thing about that band. They make you dance. Oh yeah. And yeah, so, so fun. I expend all my energy dancing for them. And then when you and I go on at two in the morning, I'm exhausted. Right. We play like all but our last song and I lay on the stage because I am done. And I hear Chris Pack yelling at me, get up, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I ruined myself for you. Yeah. Well, Chris, Twisty Chris is like, I, I, I put on a full suit and I did, I, I did seven what, dance numbers. Whatever, like I whatever, am Elvis dude. and Clint. I was also, you can't hang with them. I was also 300 pounds. So whatever. We got paid for that show. So our first gig at a club, we get paid bizarre. Never gotten paid for any of my other music stuff, Noff and I hey, did, ever. I, hey, we breathed success. The best memory of that show is the door guy telling me this long story about how he used to sell gel tabs of acid. Excellent. And he told it for so long, I realized he was hoping I was going to ask him if he had some acid. And then I was like, good night. <laughs> So it, that that's speaking of hilarious people you meet at shows i think this was in newport ritchie what was that bar over there that insomniacs we insomniacs i remember the guy like aggressively hounding me after we got off stage he was fucking wasted humongous dude like he was like towering over me and I think I was I was on the stage and he was still taller than me. And and like and he was like aggressively trying to get me to jam with him. Like as far as like, yeah. hey yeah, your guitarist man he doesn't seem to like blah, 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 blah. he you know he doesn't do this I do this and I'm like dude like yeah. do you want to make out or or like do you want to get the fuck away well, from me? Like can you can you please just leave me the that fuck alone? That was the night when they followed me to the car. Lietta's back was hurting and so she had filmed us. And then she went. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, she loves you. Lietta is asleep in the car and I am gathering up the gear and packing up the car. And these guys are talking and talking and talking. And they said the most amazing thing ever. Like, dude, your band reminds me of crass. And I'm like, damn honored. Cause I love crass. Like, it's like, thank you. I'm like a narco punk all up in here. Thank you. He goes, because you suck, but you don't care that you suck. And I was like, oh, cool. Thanks, and then dude. the dude That's... was trying to volunteer to be our bass player. Oh, yeah. And when that wasn't working, his drunker than he was buddy, he's like, but this guy's the bass player. He's like, yeah, man, I just need a bass and an amp. And I'm like, so you're you a- you're a guy. <laughs> <laughs> you're just a man. You're just you don't have a base. And uh, they were talking and talking and talking and talking. I got really uncomfortable because there was four of them at this point. And the fourth guy who walked up looked like he had just smoked some crack. Like he looked. Well, I mean, not, it's NPR. So. It's it's yes, it's Newport Richie. He didn't look sickly, but he looked very intense. And so I was looking at these guys and I said a phrase I have never said before in my life. I said. Yo, I got a bounce. <laughs> I've never before or since sincerely told someone, yo, I got a bounce. Excellent. Because they're like, oh, man, you're going. I said, yeah, my wife's asleep in the car. And the dude said, Marky quotes this all the time. The dude said, hey, man, you got to choose between punk rock or your marriage. <laughs> That's like unintentionally like really inspired, I think. I, I love it, dude. <laughs> I, I honestly I can't figure out a way to rebut or refute. <laughs> that was a great night. Pearls of wisdom. So immediately we started recording and right. we I had, had enough songs at that point to where we were like Let's do just let's do an EP. Let's yeah. start doing an EP. So I had experience recording Naf and I for years with the old four track. 
And so I was determined to record these songs for us. And what I had was is a digital four track, the Porta Studio, the DP004 Tascam. Yep. And it had two inputs. So it's technically a two track. So drums through the mixer get crunched down to one, one. mono signal guitars and the other so i suppose i could have gotten more creative but i was also terrified <laughs> and this was back when i didn't know about um noise reduction because you know room sound is good you want you want the sound of room but what you don't want is that room sound on the drums the room sound on the guitar the room sound on the keyboard the room sound on this layer of vocals etc etc now you have the noisiest recordings ever that it doesn't even sound like tape hiss. It sounds like digital noisy garbage. So these recordings <laughs> of our songs, a lot of which, all of which, except for whore's glory ended up on you're never nothing. But we were so proud of these songs. We would burn them onto CDRs and we would draw on them. And we, I had old manga that we were donating. So I'd cut up, like the shoujo manga and make CD make covers. I mean, it was so easy to just like throw them out in the yeah. at shows. Yeah, it was we'd have a, we'd have a CD party where we just sit around and cut stuff up and glue it together and shit. Oh yeah, and we had yeah we, we then we had your lovely wife make us amazing stickers yes. and art. Yeah, Leah has always drawn our art, and those songs, according to my notes, those were the original. I believe the original few songs we had that sounds that sounds about right yeah yeah and this was 2013 2014 and we just played those songs at i mean we were so prolific for me as a band because as far as time as far as amount of playing as far as amount of gigs shows, goes, yeah, yeah for sure me too Noff and i were in a band for 13 years and i think we played nine gigs in 13 years we still don't play enough, especially with the pandemic, but you Definitely know, not, yeah. we, we played a lot for me. Yeah. It was weird. I almost got into like the zone with it. <laughs> well, and it's that thing we can always come back to like, and I've always, that's how I've always viewed the band. Like, and you know, even if we're not like regularly cranking out like recordings or new songs, it's like, it's still always that thing that we could just go and play somewhere and just rock exactly. a gig really quick. And like, everybody seems to have fun because you know, when it's like a local band, like, I don't know if we had you know, if everybody knew our album or something like that, it would be different. You know what I mean? Yeah. We can always just go and like, it's not like we're playing the same stuff every time, but you know, we can put together, we have enough of a catalog to put together like a fun little set to mix it up. And because we're like a local band, everybody's just going to just be in the moment with us. Yeah. You know, they're it, not going to be worried about what song we're playing. They don't care. And we're kind of weird. Our songs make people go, what? And our stage presence and especially our banter made people really confused. Yeah. We confused the fuck out of death metal bands. Whenever we play Brass Mug, we'd play with a death that metal band. True. And my favorite compliment I ever got from a death metal dude was, yeah, that was, uh, that was different. <laughs> <laughs> so, cause we're, we're just, we're punk, but we are so not the trappings of a punk song. I do feel like it's DIY. It's a DIY style, and I think that overlaps a bit with, like, punk, and I feel like we're fast and loud most of the time. But, you know, you mix in, like, spacey sounds, and then we're almost like a space punk yeah. band. It's not like, like, it's like it's not space Ooh, rock, like it's not surf rock, it's not punk, but it's not just rock. You know what I mean? If I tell people we're rock, I'm like, it doesn't feel like it's painting the whole picture. Yeah. And nobody knows really, like, what we sound like, so it's a little bit hard to... No, I'm not saying we sound so unique. It's indescribable it's just, either. At one in the morning... At a shitty club in Tampa, people are going to look at you like, what? Yeah. Because you're not doing Misfits covers. We're not a Pearl Jam cover band yeah. or whatever the fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. We're, we're, Tampa is the big death metal capital of the world. Right. So anything not death metal is going to stick out pretty weird. The, the thing I've been told by multiple people is that we sound very 90s. So we got apparently we have, and this is probably all my fault. But you like this stuff too. It's like '90s screamo, '90s um, post rock stuff. Sure. You know, like a lot I, of that. I, shit. I straight up even like a lot of the '90s mainstream rock because, like, as a kid, like that's what I was always on the radio. Mm -hmm. And it's like I feel like I have quite a bit of DNA of those bands too. Like my uncle, when I was in like sixth grade 
or fifth grade handed me the color and the shape by Foo Fighters. He was like, here's this cassette tape. Sonny, go nice. listen to it. Yeah. Nice. And it's like, that's fucking awesome. And it's like, it's big ass drums. If that is rock, like to me, that's yes. what rock is, especially in the nineties. And like, you know, I feel like that was part of my like DNA as well. And I feel like it, it kind of is this weird secret sauce of like, just strange enough to not get booed. Yes. In a way, like, or because, like, no, because it's like, I feel like we come technically correct to our instruments. Yes. So it's not like we're drunk as fuck on stage. Nope. So it's like, we can't, you know, play our instruments. And it's not like we're Sid Vicious, who is like, or, you know, or, or like Johnny Rotten when they first started, they didn't even know how to play their instruments. Yeah. Like, you know, whatever. So it's like, you know, we have, I feel like we have an attainable, like, style for ourselves that we've created yeah. and, oh, is, it's... and is replicable live that pretty easily without just our normal setup. What is our genre? realism we're realistic music because exactly. i've always said that yeah. we play what we can achieve yeah or like what you can recreate <laughs> in the room i feel like helps yes. because it's like if you sound like what you want to sound like people are just going to pick up what you're putting down even if it's right. not like classically like good especially like when it comes to like yeah. all those punk bands that didn't sound quote unquote whatever good. you might be good yeah i mean they didn't sound good and i learned real quick with us something i didn't know with my old band which was when i made boo-boos I would probably get more nervous back in the day. With you, I just laughed. Whenever I'm la whenever I'm smiling or laughing, I am fucking something up. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, like they always say, "Oh, the audience doesn't know." Definitely and I'm like, not. "Well, have you heard what I did, though?" You know, like <laughs> yeah, but they don't know what you're trying to do in a way too. That's kind of goes becomes what we oh, were they saying. Know. <laughs> I mean, you know, it just depends because like the way you do. I mean, the way you laugh it off or the way you even play it off. I know some people are just like, "Oh, I don't even." They don't even <laughs> flinch. They don't even make a reaction. And I just emphasize it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, I mean, it just depends. I feel like, it, but it all looks like you're having fun so i think yeah. that's i think that's the difference like it doesn't even matter they're not going to know anything as right. long as you'll think you're having fun which, especially when they're shit faced right yeah and that's the yeah. best is the drunk people that come up to you and, and give you like this speech about how you're the best thing they've ever seen <laughs> it's so fun but i i also really appreciate the hypercritical people who are also drunk and want to compliment me or you, but they're doing it in this really like kind of condescending way. And it's usually other musicians right. who are, because we always end up playing to the bands. Very, we have a few shows where we play to non musicians. We'll talk about those in our favorite gigs section. We've already been teasing a little bit. Teasing it now. So in 2016, we did two things. We started recording this. We started recording You're Never Nothing, and we got matching tattoos. Matching tattoos like, baby. we're on video. I just showed you mine, and I, you showed me yours. We just show, showed each we, other. We wrote this song called Cat Snake, uh, based on the meme. Just look up the meme for Cat Snake. You'll yeah. see what I'm talking about. But it's also about our friend Marky, who joined the band. And he he's a very inspiring figure to me. Like, uh, the weird... Our band is odd. The propel are criminally weird. They are very, like, Mark, he's a truly unique individual. Is he a podcast alum? He has been on the show once. I would say then, yeah. Yes, he's absolutely been on the show. We talked about Rob Zombie, and we had a great time. Me and Carrie, who's also in the Pro Bowl. Ronald Zondry. And they're, they're our sister band, which is why it's not surprising at all that we'd steal Marky just for a little bit to play bass for us. Oh, well. So we got our matching tats. Of a cat snake, so it's a it's a cat wrapped in a snake, mm -hmm. or a snake that's wrapping itself around a, a cat. It, it's you know, Wait. it's it's up to it's it's a, up to yeah. interpretation. <laughs> so we did, we took the plunge, Marky. We're uh, we'll work on you. We'll get you to get this tattoo as well. Probably on your butt. I oh, know. I'm just kidding. His butt is full of tattoos, probably <laughs> of butts, <laughs> of feet. March 2016. We're like, this is it. We're doing an album. We start. Like really seriously recording us because I learned how to do noise reduction. Now that room sound I could eliminate without fucking up our tone. And folks, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but this album we did with the same setup we did all our demos on somehow magically sounds amazing to me in my car, which is always the hardest thing to do is to get it to sound good in your car. Now, folks, when I say amazing, I mean amazing for a recording that we did ourselves and paid exactly zero dollars for. Very, very cheap recording. I might have bought us microphone cables, new microphone cables. Everything we did was with existing equipment I had. 
my equipment. Existing. Mm. From March 2016 to January 2017, this was a big production. And the one thing that slowed us down was a little song called And the Babysitter. Because I freaked out because I hated my guitar playing. <laughs> It was a struggle for sure. It was. I, 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 feel like, I feel like we congealed quite a bit of it in the beginning and all I had all my stuff like pretty much out there when you had your first draft, but then you came back for like more drafts. And we, you weren't it's massaging. definitely an improvement. We're going to talk about the two things I would absolutely love to do over completely with this album, but it's not too bad, all things considered. So let's go into the songs. Let's talk about, we'll talk about the artwork after the songs because the artwork is sublime. It's from, yeah, I was gonna say phenomenal or or uh, crackable, <laughs> smoke crackable. So the first song, Sir Walter Hope Chest, that was written for my buddy Ryan, who Ryan was Fidget Hastings. he was Ryan Hastings was a, a kung fu master. He like studied martial arts. He was fluent in Latin so much so that he traveled to Italy and lived in Rome to work at the Vatican Library. Um, and also he's very good looking and bonus amazing drummer like Juna 44, Rodan, um, Portis, like all those like really weird drum beats that I don't understand how he could come up with that shit, but he passed away in a, he just died tragically and I wanted to do something to honor him. So that's where, uh, Sir Walter Hope Chess, that was my little nickname for him. We drove around in, in my car, and he had a fake mustache on, and that was it. That was the whole character. <laughs> His image is on the single on Bandcamp, right? Yeah, and that was the first. That was the first thing that we were. I remember coming up with. That's track one. Track two, the most, and I'm going to use the I'm going to use the U word, the most underrated Gyrojet song, which is "Show Us Your Tapes," my ode to VHS tapes. It was uh, definitely a, a, a one that was, was very special, I think, to both of us. I'm glad that we were able to squeeze in a video. Yes. Um, I felt like that was a, a very uh, required uh, for both of us. And we played it live maybe twice or maybe three times. We played it a few times. And sure. nobody would react. It's the song I remember. It would end and people would just sort of go, huh. Nobody would clap for that one. I got really like, what? Yeah, it's one of the, it's like enough to make you second guess. Like, maybe did we not do the ending exciting enough or bring it to a more like, like obvious ending? I'm not sure. But I love that song so much. It's a good one. As my real singing, I am more of a shouter. I didn't always shout, but I actually sing in that song. Uh, our video is us snorting uh, VHS tape. You roll up some yep. some bills and we snort it, and then we come back from the future and shoot ourselves to death. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. Like I said, there was a storyline <laughs> that it was a story that we needed to tell, and we got to use green screen. I oh, think a little first bit. time. That was like the first time we used green screen. Yeah. So Beautiful. next up is track three, Ghost Pizza. Yep. This is one of our old ones, one of our, our early ones. The first time I used a capo, I actually like put the capo on uh, G. And I still don't know what notes I'm playing in the song right. <laughs> to this day. But that song, it was... Um, it was an inside joke. I don't know if we want to name them, but it was a, it was a joke from one of uh, a friend's, a mutual friend's girlfriend at the time. They were wearing a shirt that says, you're not Ghost Pizza, essentially. And we were like, you're not... It wasn't Ghost Pizza. It was obviously their name. Right. And it was like, and we we're like, you're not. And you were just like, you're not Ghost, Ghost Pizza. Pizza. Yeah. You're like, obviously so brilliant. You remember it better than I do. Uh, the lyrics are sort of about my roommate. I lived with this French girl for a year and her friend worked at Pizza Hut and would always show up with a free pizza. And she was really strange to me because this French girl and her had nothing in common. But they like to party. I mean, that sounds and like think something that you was have it. Come, yeah. But she would just come in with always had free pizza, and that's so the awesome. song is just sort of about her. But I don't even remember her name. Dude, was, that's amazing. I, I didn't even know. I don't. I'm not sure I ever even knew that. Or maybe coincidentally, I knew that. Ryan Hastings um, read a bunch of my poetry to her. He performed poetry to her. Oh my god! Did she? Yeah. Did her clothes melt off? <laughs> They were very confused. That's amazing. <laughs> That's, I mean, honestly, maybe, uh, like, maybe Ryan Fujigi Hastings was, like, uh, unwittingly the first yeah. gyro member. See? And I think that is our easily, 
easily our most popular song because I've had people go, you're the pizza band. And so, hey, sing about pizza. You get some fans. But you know what it is, is you give something, you give the audience something to do in the song and they'll remember the fucking song. Like, as if they're screaming ghost pizza, they're going to be like, you guys are the ghost pizza band. Or screaming, you're not. Yeah. You're not ghost pizza. Yeah. Some of our, um, our freaking, uh, fan art. I think it was Will Clark who drew a ghost on an old dirty pizza box <laughs> or something like that. It was so good. Oh my God. Uh, the next is one of our oldies. Uh, this is track four. The genre is blues, which has no lyrics, Nope. but it's from ripping a CD into your computer and it defaults to the, the genre of blues. <laughs> Windows Media Player. Yes, and that's where the song title came Absolutely. from. Absolutely, <laughs> and that's I feel like I feel like that is our most Windows Media Player song yeah. by far. If I could give it that, it's, I, uh, it's Winamp. <laughs> no man, Winamp really whips the llama's ass. You want to talk about Winamp? <laughs> our Winamp one is easily Cat Snake. I would say that's our Winamp song. Oh shit, dude! I I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about it, what I do, I will say the genres blues might be our most proggy song. We go through some changes. Yeah, we go yeah. through a lot of changes in that one. That's true. That's and true. Some some mood shifts. Uh, next up is Hooves, which was one of our middle middle period songs. We came yeah. up with that. Um, this is Will Clark. Maybe had something to do with was an ins <laughs> a, a minor inspiration in the beginning. Our our friend Will, he went to every Brony event, and he came to me at work and said. We have this fundraiser coming up because we want to go to the big brony convention. So we need to raise money. Will you come and play our show? And I was like, before he even finished, I was saying yes. Because I didn't know what a brony was, but I was like, I'm into yeah. it. I'm into it. We immediately wrote a song about bronies called Hooves. Yep. It's our, it's our pro awesome brony song. And we debuted it at a boba tea shop. I remember that. And it was the guy with the creepy guy with the drum set who was really, really anal retentive about his drum set. But he wanted, but he was like letting people use it. I'm like, are you sure you, I mean, I got my own kit and he was like, no, 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 this will be faster. Like he wanted it to be fast. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, all right, dude, like I'm going to blast this kit. Like, I mean, I'm not like crazy, but I'm also <laughs> not going to like kiss it and like caress it either. Like he I don't told know. you, he even told you, oh, uh, I had a stomach virus. You might not want to play my drums. And you were like, I'll wash my hands after, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to like so, lick, it. Lick, it. So lick it. annoying. Yeah, but it was weird because like, did, I, I can't remember because I mean, I remember bringing my kit. I had it there. But it was, was in the car. It was a reason why they didn't want me to set it, it up. Was, it was just because of timing. Yeah, it was just time. time. That's it was very silly. I mean, that's the last Boba shop we ever played, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it may not be the last forever. I, I, I hope, hope not. not. It was fun. Uh, yeah, it was good. It was just really small in there. But yeah. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah, I remember that one. We made a music video for Hooves. A lot of these right. have music videos, but yeah. Hooves is a horror movie right which i'll link in this description that's the old version we i could probably recut it with the version of hooves on here but the demo is just as good i think that's one yeah. of the songs that i like both versions Me equally too. next up is our our lietta saying the title track lietta saying you're never nothing over and over again this is our weird there's two pieces of you're never nothing of artsiness where we just let it's our freak flags Fly. I have trouble saying that phrase. Well, I feel like in an album you need something to break up. Like, I mean, if we were if we were just like a hardcore band, it's like yeah, every song can be like the same tempo or, yep. or you know whatever, and because you know we just want to like make songs. But I just, you know, I feel like we already probably do a lot of similar things in our songs enough to where I'm like I don't want to seem yeah. too homogenous. Yeah, there there are songs that um I've been told sound alike, and I'm like uh oh. <laughs> well, okay, I I will try we'll try more better later. Uh, but yeah, so that's Lieta's appearance on the album. I think she has two or three. She does some backup vocals on other tracks. And then a banger, Akira. Definitely. We needed One, something two, to three, homage four, our love of 80s and late 90s animes. Yeah. Track seven. Um, this is... And mangers. I was literally referencing the old VHS dub of Akira. Not the read... The re they tried to make it better, and they changed the translation which wasn't good to begin with like he, that dude doesn't say this chapter's finished he does not say that what are you the funeral director i don't think he says that in the movie <laughs> but those are my favorite lines the important the most important line is we can't dance to the tune of the corrupt politicians and capitalists <laughs> and those are that is in both versions at least <laughs> well that's true that's just true yeah we we 
played that at one of our my favorite shows ever. Our our pals of the night prom date were so into it. Oh yeah, that was actually probably one of the higher compliments I feel like we've ever gotten. We'll they talk were about looking awesome. Yeah, we'll just talk about them now. Yeah. Prom date was this like very very uh, LGBTQ plus friendly amazing disco meets um the only thing i think of do you remember the cardigans yeah it reminded me of like a more like funky disco cardigan for sure. driving like, there's like an abba uh, mixture yes. of it too like i could tell there's like big influences on like how that how they would be yeah they sounded so good they were all like really really like well like supported music they had really nice they gear shit they, down they dude. had it down yeah they like they they had everything down not least of which is the music and yeah. their ability to play because like that was amazing and they were really 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 they, they, you know they asked us to play after them because they were you know the touring band and they didn't want people to leave get it was late. gonna be dead yeah it was getting late and we were like sure fine you guys drove from freaking louisiana to be here oh, we're, yeah. we're good to go so they blew us out of the water thank god we were different totally different bands. exactly i think and they probably even could have picked up on that like we you know it's not like we were trying to upstage them or anything right. like that we were just playing everybody out like dude and they were just cool they just blew us away and then um and they were so nice too like that was another thing too they were just so nice so complimentary they left the lights they had this amazing light gear set up that would pulse with the music right and change and go through pur purple and pink and blue and the, the the venue which was called it was an art house the venture compound venture compound yeah that place already had a chandelier yeah hanging up on the TVs ceiling TVs everywhere CRTs everywhere projectors uh so it's our most beautiful gig and luckily yeah. Lietta was there to take pictures yeah and those are some of my favorite pictures yeah we do we we got set up really well there it's kind of like playing the brass mug like you know you feel like you're on a big stage you sound great because the brass mug sounds awesome i mean the only thing you're missing is the cool lights and i feel like that's what i liked more about venture is like that's more my space like yeah. really i love playing in very like crazy lights and like have people not like because it, it kind of like there's no curtain like in an in, in like like a i don't know like a local show like you know we played the bunker a thousand times and it's yes. great and it's a coffee shop but on you're the floor. like you're on the floor literally like <laughs> right in front of a bookshelf like yeah. right in front of the right in front of the counter where people are like ordering and waiting and just looking at you yeah but like when the lights are a little bit down there's like a little curtain there you know you can't see like sharp details you can you're not you're not like you already feel like people are looking at you even if they're not it's a fucking local show they're just like yeah. sitting around with their thumbs up their asses whatever, like. <laughs> but doing, like, the, doing the tampa arm folding exactly dance. yeah which i'm guilty of too i, I mean that's, it's the most comfortable way just to stay in your <laughs> look at a band okay i'm not gonna just get down and start like doing the worm like okay i'm gonna sit <laughs> here yet. and listen to me not yet but you gotta earn it you earn, gotta make me want to dude you gotta earn the you worm earn the worm um <laughs> what was i saying i don't even know but yeah like i i i feel like that was i, I like the low light kind of yeah. deal and i feel like our brony show was really good too we oh that's in my big, list yeah big oh, yeah. ass stage awesome list. lights we'll we got that. to like I feel like all of that sets like a barrier that yeah. I feel like is valuable at a local, at least a local <laughs> show. You know, it, I mean, I went and saw Tool the other day, and it was like, you know, you're never gonna get on that scale, but like that's like the holy grail. Like, you, right. he like Maynard is far in the back. He doesn't even have a light on him really that's usually. So crazy. I'm like, ah, oh, that must be so comfortable. Like, because he's got two stages, he gets to walk right. Probably like he doesn't even wear shoes. Probably I don't even know. He just walks around in a perfect circle. That, <laughs> yeah, good joke. I, I, that's why I feel like when I, I go to see Stephen Wilson like he literally comes out he's like i'm wearing the most comfortable thing i could possibly yeah. wear i'm not wearing shoes i have carpet everywhere so it's like comfortable and i just walk out and i rock you for like yeah he's two your and guy. A half hours yeah. i had never heard of him you taught yeah. you taught me about that guy i just always want to be like comfortable on stage but like it is cool sometimes to like branch out but people want to know when we're going to get to italian horror and it's right now oh, and the babysitter is our uh, my ode stronzi to freaking uh, Anne from the House by the Cemetery, you help me make this come alive. Like this song is one of my favorites to fuck up um, <laughs> and not play great and restart. We should start it. Just start over. I mean, I always have ideas on how to play it better <laughs> than I did on this on this album, <laughs> and we did too. The the hidden thing is when we're singing the ah uh, like the the ahs and stuff mm -hmm. is i go i suck i kind of slip that in there <laughs> but then again it's from the, it's from the perspective of bob one of the most hated characters in all of italian horror who i relate to he is singing it so he's like i suck yeah bob bob will tell you to embrace the suck i've i've sucked 
myself dry tonight. God, you're so lucky. I, you have to teach me your ways. I'm very limber. But yeah, that is a lot of uh, a Chase. Our buddy Chase has gotten us all those gigs um, at uh, the bunker. It's his favorite song. Uh, we played a song. We played a song. We played Anne, and he danced to it for his movie that he didn't finish. He had this whole movie he was making, oh, right. and it was supposed to be like him having a psychotic break. So he danced through the entire song, and just he just did this like crazy interpretive dance while he was a little hmm. drunk. It I wonder, was wonder if the wonder if the project got too real. <laughs> it, was, it, got too real. it was too real. <laughs> it was like I don't I don't really want to actually have one. So let me just put this down. There you go. There you go. Next up is uh, an old one, Slurpees. This was one of our original songs. Um, I have uh, performance anxiety now with looping, so I'm a big pedal guy. I haven't even gone into my whole guitar pedal spiel. I love delay pedals, reverb pedals, octave pedals, and especially loopers. But now I have this thing with looping where I second-guess my timing. Also, my favorite looper died. The old Line 6, the DL4, died, and I refused to buy another one because that was my fourth one that I had to buy, borrow, and steal just to get that. Things are so expensive. And I gave up. I finally gave up. But now my thing with looping is I'm like, hit record, play the piece, and then right before I should hit the loop, I pause for a second. Or I do it a second too early so the loop isn't in time. And that's my new thing, which is why we don't play Slurpees anymore. It's very sad because that is one of my favorite things we've ever done. It's also a difficult part because I'm not playing to give you a downbeat during that time. So it's kind of like maybe I could, you know, if I could click the collabs well, or we've something, done, but that's we've, confusing. We've done some shit bit. where we've tried to work it out and I just keep goofing on that loop. But we'll figure it out. And we'll that's, that's so that opening guitar part of Anne, that's the thing I'm like, when I'm listening to this album, I don't want to freaking do it. The loop on Slurpees goes on way too long, and I should have condensed it, because it's a seven-minute song. It's seven minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? It could have been five. It could have been six, but... Yeah, whatever. And I, don't, I, I would not change it, but I wish that at the time when I was editing it together, I just said this, like, you know, years from now, you're going to be sick of this shit. And now I'm like, ah, so close. <laughs> the thing I want to talk about is the music video for Slurpees. Mm. It was one of our, I think the last videos we did for this album. Yeah. And the, the reason I don't like this music video is nothing to do with you and me and Marky and Carrie and like all the work we put into it. I had this brilliant idea <laughs> where Marky and Carrie are, they're aliens from planet 7-Eleven and they don't speak English. They have their own unique language of hand signals. And then I subtitle their conversation. Now, when I watch the video, I go, great. It looks like I'm making fun of deaf people. Like, it literally makes me think somebody somewhere is going to see this video and be like, wow, this guy hates deaf people. You no, know, I bet I bet no one no. Uh, in the world thought that until, until now. right now. Yeah, you might want to edit that out. <laughs> no way, dude. I'm keeping it. <laughs> I, I, it's, it was all... Like pure spirit, I was really trying to do this thing. I, there's some of the imagery in, in that video is like some of my favorite shit I've ever filmed. We definitely have created the most interesting characters and or character names right. I think, for that one. That's right. It's all in the, the final credits, folks. You got to stick around. No, this was not my finest hour of ideas, but I, that whole video is friggin' amazing. Uh, Carrie was still full of a uh, little Melody. Right. Melody hadn't been born yet. Right. But she's technically in the video, I guess. That's right. Second video. The first video she's been in. Next up two. is the song that sounds, I think, sounds the best recorded wise on this album, which is Gun Help Is Help, which was another conversation we were having about. It was a yes and title. For yes. Sure. And we were doing this. We we're talking about someone bringing a gun and they, they thought that was help. And we were like, well, gun help is help. And now I'm like. After all these, like, freaking horrific mass shootings, I'm like, now it's our anti-gun song, when before it had meant nothing. It was, it meant nothing before. Now right. I'm like, fuck guns, bleh! <laughs> they're definitely, uh... <laughs> they're not helping. They're not helping. That's, 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 that's pretty, that's But pretty that funny. song has a bass line that I r learned, uh, you know, I'm playing it on guitar, obviously, but when I was taking bass lessons back in the 90s, the down, 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 ba -down, ba -down, ba -down, ba -down. That is actually a bass line I learned that I still play on guitar. 
in our song. <laughs> Did I mention there's no bass on this record? I tried. There's a photograph of me. I took a picture of the bass. I had the capo on because I was trying to play bass to Ghost Pizza, and I failed miserably because I'm not a bass player, which is why we have a bass player now. Next up is another oldie called Napoleon Broplex. That's our second song ever, I think, that we wrote. Damn. And that has a that has a crazy loop part in it, too, that I can't do anymore because I screw up the loop. It has me doing finger tapping. I remember On that. the guitar. I never <laughs> finger tap anymore. I got to bring that back. Uh, Napoleon Broplex is just about bro culture and, like, dude bros being assholes. Has no lyrics. So. <laughs> it might be our peak. Oops. How would you not know? <laughs> it might be. It sounds like it was our technical writing peak, at least. Oh, it is a complicated thing. It's I. It has that Russian like, dun, 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 and you're doing right, like yeah. marching beat. Oh man. Oh yeah, for sure. See, folks, I told you, self indulgent. You didn't believe me. I was actually gonna ask. Aren't most podcast episodes at least somewhat slightly self indulgent? I mean, why why should this be anything? Yeah, but we're trying to set a new record. <laughs> we're, we're just <laughs> doing we're doing our thing. Okay, here's here's the big, f- not not the finale. I guess this would be the finale. Uh, Cat Snake. Yeah, we talked a little bit about Cat Snake For earlier, sure. um, and yeah, it's the lyrics are literally, um, there's no such thing as trying too hard, and um, and nothing is too clever. Yes, and nothing is too clever. I forgot the lyrics. That is like my mantra of because that's one thing I we try to be an unhipster band as hard as we can because we don't dislike something because it got popular and we don't like stuff just because it's obscure and we love nerding out on the shit and like comic books and just anything that like movies anything that's like nerd culture that you're so wrapped up in that it makes you happy that's sort of what it's about and it's also about marky of course right i mean it's about doing your own thing i feel like that's kind of like the spirit of the band and that that's what makes things seem hip i think in a way because if you're forging your own path you're looking ahead you're not checking behind you or to the side of you to see if approval is gained or if it's important or not you know and like and i think that's kind of how we are we're not beholden to we need to get an album out every two years or we need to do this or we need to play a show every year or whatever you know i'm I'm perfectly happy coming over here and just blasting out some jams like getting you know like getting just the cobwebs loose from like the week of just like (laughs) you know going to work day to day and stuff like that yeah and we're slow with with learning new stuff but and we were doing pretty good as far as my track record. We've played over 35 shows, I think, or in that range, which is... That feels crazy. For other bands, 10 years means they've lost count of how many shows they've played. That happens. I was in which a band... Which I technically had. I, yeah, I was in a band <laughs> that we could, we could never get I, gigs because we were hideous. And now it's like I'm in this band where I, we're confident... In the songs, because Ladies of Death Row, we were playing half ideas. We weren't. We didn't even know what we were gonna do half the time. Our our darkest hour being me on stage, fully mic through a PA system, making a song parodying Prince's songs, and all I had to do was rip out a couple of uh, Prince lyrics while Nafa played funk guitar <laughs> and Chris Pack played drums. What happens when I get on stage? Blank. Complete blank. All I could think of was Raspberry Beret. So I just, me, for like three minutes, just going, Raspberry Beret, and long pause. Raspberry Beret. It was humiliating. And I was like, dude, we got to have a plan. So now, when you and I are going to do something stupid, usually during our banter... (laughs) At least then we could stop and play a real song that we right. know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and I feel like I feel like we have certain things like songs where we can set up a show. Like Cat Snake is like pretty much like the closer. Yeah, yeah. So like if we if it gets to like a weird awkward phase, it's like yeah, and then we'll just end the show and people it. will be like, oh man, they just blasted out. All right, thank you, good night. All right, they, fine. They, they and forgot. Everybody's always happy when it's over, even if they like the band. They're like, all right, I guess let's leave. They forgot we talked for four minutes between every song because <laughs> hey, we like to talk to people. You, it's always fun. And we're always with our friends and so it's always this friend thing i always want to get like a couple laughs even if it's like stupid and they're not usually that cheap but like we'll just make like just funny things or like you know self-deprecating humor yes is always i good. always have the history of the nightclub whenever we're playing a club i have the secret history which i make up on the spot like uh, pegasus lounge was a civil war donkey hospital <laughs> 
I remember that. I remember coming up with that. And like the the whole place was like, what? I like to introduce us as different things. Like, like, and I got it from this stupid band. I, I can't, I can't remember. It was like, they were a duo actually. And they're not stupid. They were awesome. They were opening up for a couple, like a touring band I had seen. They would like introduce themselves as like, <laughs> the guy comes up and he's like, hi, we're Woody Guthrie. And he points to himself. He's like, I'm Woody. And he points to his ba- his drummer. And he's like, that's Guthrie. <laughs> And then they just start like, just like, oh, no. I don't know. And he just like lets it die. It's and then they just so fucking ride. They just like, they come in with like uh, this, burner, <laughs> like this That's really brilliant. humongously heavy rock for just like a two duo, but it's very classic and oh, it's man. very like, like Southern God. or whatever. Yeah. It's like that. So like, I always like to introduce us as like Laurel and Hardy. I'm Laurel. He's Hardy. I we always know. do something I, crazy. Something we always have some weird shit like. I'm Manola. He's Leblonic. All of our footage that we have is us talking to the crowd and making stupid ass jokes. That's yeah, great. And it's, 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 it's what you want. So the last song on the album is You're Never Nothing Forever. And that's our, our, our reprise or reprise or reprise. I don't know how you say that word. Where Lietta comes back, except it's not Lietta, it's me and you going, you're never nothing. You're never nothing. <laughs> we were like, <laughs> we were trying to find the key in the recording, but we were like, how is it like, because I mean, I don't know what key anything's in. It's yeah, just, we're, nope. We go by ear. So knows? I remember a brony chick asking us, or I should say a Pegasus sister came yes. up to us at that show and asked us very intently about like things about charting music and i was like i literally do not write music down like that wow. we have it's just all in our heads and she's like well what key do you guys play most of the songs in and i'm like i i don't really tune my drums to a specific key you'd have to ask the guy that plays notes yep. like over there and i would I'm be like sure. i'd just laugh and be like e e i play so much shit in e and like <laughs> a and b and b that's it like e a and b is like the secret yeah. to our whole band yeah, which is totally good except I mean, when i'm playing the other notes yeah i mean i need all i need every note i would actually move you're never nothing forever before Cat Snake, and then close and it out with Cat Snake. That would be the, the the director's cut. Yeah, dude. Let's talk about this art real artwork real quick. Lietta, of course, drew the artwork. We've got, um, which I find very funny, is the "You're Never Nothing" monster girl. It's a girl creeping behind a monster and whispering in his ear that "You're Never Nothing." And Lietta went out of her way to make this look like um, an old comic book panel. So it's got the the ink, the four the, color. Yeah, the four color dot matrixy looking ink. Mm-hmm. And now when I look at it, I assume she's pegging him, like, but still with the same message. Well, and it, uh, and at the very least, her name <laughs> might be Peg. <laughs> exactly. You've got us on a bumper car that's in space on the back. Um, and the inside, dude, the freaking collage. I forget about the collage. <laughs> and it's all these weird pictures of us and, like, shows and just beautiful. But the big thing I love is this Japanese horror girl. I'm, I'm pointing at it like it's on camera. The Japanese horror girl, you put that in there. Do you remember what film that's from? Because I have two ideas. No. I think. Haosu, maybe? It's no. I wish it was Haosu, but I, this is whatever it is is great. But I think <laughs> this picture of you makes me laugh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I believe it is from either Machine Girl or Tokyo Gore Police. Okay. It could be. Suicide Club, but I really am leaning towards the the Tokyo Gore Police or Machine Girl. I should have asked you at the time. You just plopped it in there, and we didn't worry about copyright. We just threw that oh, shit yeah, in there. No, Whatever. I, I have no idea. Well, you know, we've also got a little a little Crisco action yeah, on the our, top you know, left. Crisco baby. is inspiring. But yeah, we put this out on Amazon has now discontinued their print-on-demand service, but if you want a copy of you're never nothing on CD. Uh, just freaking uh, doomed movie thon at Gmail and I'll freaking send you one. But you can also just listen to it if you're not into CDs nuts. and gyrojets dot nuts. No, <laughs> gyrojets dot bandcamp dot com. Well, I'll have all these links at the bottom and everything. Whew, that's the whole record, dude. That's it. That's all the songs. So let's, t- let's talk a little bit about our our more memorable gigs. I mean, we touched it. Yes. But let's let's just run down the top. Uh, let's like a, like maybe I will we'll give a top you, five between the two of us. I'll give you my that. two least favorite gigs before we get to the good ones. Okay, yeah, we'll start with the Razzies. The first is the worst one was when we we didn't get to play. First time in Insomniacs, we went out there and there was seven bands on the bill, and that ska band. Right. Um, right before the place was going to close, 
they rushed the stage with their gear. They weren't even supposed to play that night. But Marky, he like told them, no, we have too many bands. And they showed up anyway. And as soon as they saw an opening, they started loading up their gear. And since they're a ska band, they're like seven people. And they're taking forever. And someone told me, dude, this place closes at two. And it's like one thirty-eight or some shit. Right. I went to the owner and I was like, hey, when do you guys close? He's like, oh, we close at two. And I'm like, they're not going to be done setting up before two. He's like, they're going to play one song. I don't care. And I was like, we're not playing then. He's like, I guess not, dude. I'm sorry. I'd go talk to Marky. <laughs> and I'd already <laughs> talked to Marky. So out in the parking lot, <laughs> Nafa was filming. I handed him my camera and I was like, film us playing tonight. And it was me just screaming at the camera. <laughs> 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 it was great. But yeah, that, that was not good. And we came back to that same club and all those people were there in a different band because mm -hmm. the ska band was either a side thing or had broken up. And I remember the guitarist and the other girl in the band like interrogating us after we were done. Like, whoa, where do you guys come from? I'm like, you stole our spot, you fuckers. Right. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, that's definitely classifies as probably one of the worst ones. I was gonna say my worst was probably the 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 show at Skippers we never got to play that never existed. Yes. But, I mean, anyway, what's your what's your other one? The other terrible one is a, is a toss up between um, when we played the bunker that one too many times, and we played with these other bands. There was a duo that was guitar and drums that played right before us. And they were, I, at the time, I was like, oh my god, these guys are so much better than us. Fuck, we suck. And you're like, <laughs> but you know, they were just so different. It didn't matter that they were a duo. It didn't make any difference. It was just weird playing after them. And then I played like donkey dicks and not the good kind. I played mm -hmm. terrible. And then the other one is the third and final Brony show. When we played at the Veterans Hall, Will Clark was like, hey... There's another brony thing. Would you guys play it? And we, we were like, uh, we were kind of on the fence. And I said, yes. And that's when Will Clark bailed on the bronies. So we showed up and we had no one to talk to. I remember that. I remember it was you now. and me talking to each other. Yeah. And nobody else. And then we were like reminding them that the band was here. Yeah. And the PA was totally the most worst setup ever. And I'm not an expert, but the monitors are for you. They should be pointed at you, but the monitors, all like four of them were on the floor in front of the stage facing the audience. Mm -hmm. So you and I couldn't, couldn't hear, hear each, each other. other. Yeah. We, and it, we are not a band that depends on that, but also I had long sleeves on and a tie. And instead of being smart, and tucking my tie into my shirt. My tie was literally laying on my guitar strings. And worse, they turn all the lights off and I had sunglasses on. And I am one of those amazing guitar players who looks at his fucking guitar or else he's lost. Because <laughs> I don't play in the dark, people. So I just played even worse than at that that bunker show. I was I it was that. the worst. It was the worst. I, I don't remember thinking that we played we sounded bad, but I do remember thinking that show was not that fun overall. It was just a, not a cool place and there were no other bands too, so it was nope. just like we don't like this too much. Like it was just it was just like, you know, like and people there were not they're not no, there they, for a band. They no. like a band was there for them, so it's like slightly different right. of a relationship. And we weren't the cover band who played the songs. Right. That's the thing I've never been good at is learning songs. So, like, learning other people's songs. I can learn our songs. Well, even if we did, I'm not going to learn Brony songs. But well, even if <laughs> we just did one, like... even if we just did one <laughs> yeah, that I wasn't guess. just a song we wrote to praise Bronies, but we never did that again. We never, we were also never asked to be fair. That is true, too. Yeah. And <laughs> What's a favorite I might have felt differently about learning the, at least the, the, the opening to Friendship is Magic. See, that would have been great. <laughs> but no, I'm like, your yeah, own version. Just make it not, like sarcastic right well now the show's like 20 years old so like and now <laughs> it's, it's it's ripe for reboot what is uh 
what is some of your favorites so i yeah you know i didn't actually have too many poopies um oh, but I definitely, oh yeah that's right but i had some good ones i really liked mario's barrel house even though it was the hottest oh, fucking God. day in the world June. but we got to play toothpaste toast we played cat snake yep. really well and i yep. feel like we pl- also played uh show us your tapes at that one yep. too and i was like it was really awesome it was right over the bridge in saint it was yeah. like a nice night nice summer as fuck that was, was good we that played was... to a bunch of biker chicks yes dude <laughs> no bathroom yeah. we, we got there and the kitchen was closed because the the guy who ran the pizza part of it had to go and work at their other store so they locked down everything but the outside bar and the patio that didn't have any way to lock it and we played with wide stance wide stance yeah they're awesome and those are great guys yeah. they are totally they're in different states now like really? they, they yeah they didn't but um they were awesome i love that cr- name too that's like one of my favorite names for a band chris the drummer is now in um, Human Error okay. that we played with. Cool. And I love Human Error. That's him and his son and their buddy. Oh, yeah. That was at um, – it wasn't Bar. Emeralds. Emerald? Yes. Yeah, that Emeralds. was a good show too. I remember one of the chicks in the other bands were like – she had to be like separated from that kid because he was like – he was like a shirt off, sweaty, yes. Johnny Rotten style. And he, she was like, what is this? Is I got in trouble. I got in trouble that night. You and I both got yelled at what? because – um, he had taken off his shirt and he was like, who wants me to take off my fucking pants? And we all went, yeah, take off your pants. And a girl turned to you and me and was like, he is 16 years old. Well, she was the one that was like, you, oh my, what is this? She was like, that was the girl that was like, that was, she was like a little bit of like, she was like, I think older than me. She felt like a little older God. than me, but she was like, she, that was the girl that was like talking about him. Like, well, who is this? What and an what, asshole. Yeah. And she, yeah. And so he you was know joking. What? I know what happened. Someone corrected her, and then and she felt guilty. Right, and then when someone else, yeah, okay, it was yeah. She, I mean, and it wasn't. Asshole. It was just one of those awkward. It things. was like, dude, I hate social awkwardness. I never forget that stuff. My whole I'll, that'll be on my deathbed. I'll be thinking about that. Yeah, that show was amazing. Though. The one yeah. you, the one you mentioned. I even like. I really liked the Emerald one too because yeah. we sounded. That was even my first time playing Emerald. I played there a couple times with, or a, a couple times total. But that was like that was. I, I always feel like we like it's. You're also on the same level as the audience. You can't see. And that place was. Packed. It was packed. It was like one of the like I liked it because there were just so Dude. many fucking people there. Now like, I'd have that a was cool. freaking COVID panic attack with that many people. It was wall to wall people. All right. Um, and we, I, the only my biggest regret about that night was. Just leaving too early. I wanted to stay for the other bands, but it was just like, oh my god, because it's a haul to St. Pete's. Like I also track. well, I parked nine million miles away, oh, and that, that was like so stupid. Yeah, because you had to carry all your gear. Mario uh, Mario's Barrel Pizza, whatever it's called, Mario's Mar- Barrel House. Barrel like, House. Mario's I call barrel. it Mar- Mario's Pizza Barrel. <laughs> and that place, <laughs> that's the only time my tube amp, which is now long gone, worked perfectly. I sounded huge mm-hmm. that was like the biggest amp night honestly i think all my picks are really st pete because i like that local 662 show with panda paradox oh my god they were so fun yeah they were awesome. the sound guy fucked them over so bad I, I yeah it was like it was one where like a bunch of our friends came out they had yeah. the great beers on top but we watched pretty much the entirety of james and bob strike back in the floor because it was playing i love it <laughs> everyone um warned me about that sound guy and then he made us sound incredible and then as soon as Panda Paradox came on, because they were very um, 80s dream pop kind of sound, and they harmonized, and they could not hear each other. Yeah, and their vocals, We were a little more DIY. We were I, on his level, maybe. I felt so bad, because <laughs> their their vocals were off all night, and they were, but they were so good. They were yeah. so good. And then I think my other two are, is it the Amsterdam that used to be there? Yes, the uh, that Amsterdam. Was a, that was a fantastic show. Okay. That's my, that's my favorite show. Of the pre-Marky era, since we've played exactly one show with our bass player now, All right. which was my favorite show with Marky. Um, but Marky was there because we played with yeah, he the Propel, and we played with Yatavio, yep. and we played with the guys who got us the gig, Lobster's Hero Shack, right. and Lucas, Lucas and his buddies. So it was <laughs> so Gyro Jets and Heroes together because people call us Hero Jets. Hero Jets, yeah. Chris Pack, like he's designed my favorite, probably one of my favorite stickers. It's literally a hero with two 747 wings. I fucking on hate that side. sticker, dude. It's so good. I I just like it for the dad joke. It's so good. Like, um, and I know, like, it's probably you know, I I don't know. If I, I had a stack of them left, I would be I'd be good with it. I'm gonna try to find some. I they think, were I think they I were a little. Pricing. Anyway, that night all of our friends came out. A shit ton of my friends from work came out. Same. And then 
we didn't go on until late because there was all this snafu with getting somebody's guitar in tune. There was a whole thing hmm. where it took someone like 45 minutes to get their guitar tuned. I'm it glad was, that's never our issue. Like, we are just I so much like, like a psycho. sit up, get, get in, yes. set up, like whatever. And then we, like, well, you know, I, try, I don't want to be a problem for the sound. I don't want to be a problem yeah. for the next band, right. but previous And band, I just like, want to talk whatever. to people. Right. I just want to get up there. Everybody <laughs> listen to us for a second. Do our stand-up yeah. comedy. And then, well, yeah, let us do our tight 15 and we'll get the fuck off. Like, <laughs> then we'll find, like, leave us alone. We'll do our cold opening for everybody. <laughs> so then welcome to the last part so we played at like 1 a.m and everybody was still there and everybody was cheering us on dakota who's in yatavio he filmed two songs and i have watched that clip of us a thousand times (laughs) it is just two songs but we are so on and we're so tight it was just like one of our best shows at that that that, that place is gone now it It was gone like like a week after we played (laughs) it We, we shut it down bro i wish my other favorite um, is, oh, the second Brony show. So the first Brony at the Boba Place was fun, but the community center. We went to USF Community Center, and this is when I should have known to say no to the third one. They could not get the microphone system of that whole place going. That place had, it was a stage with curtains. It was for plays. It was for, they probably would do like, the little kids come out and do the nutcracker or some shit. It was right. just, Matt, there, there could have been 14 of us in the band and there'd be room left over. Right. It was a humo- It was probably the biggest stage we'd ever played on. Luckily, somebody brought a PA system, so we had mics for vocals. Right. That was it. But that but really that, was it. That place could have rocked, but it, but it still was fun. And we had, it was just such a weird experience for me to be playing like what looked like a high school school play. it looked like a, i i got flashbacks of like a talent show because there was a bunch yes. of kids sitting around that were like oh, what the fuck am i watching people were literally dancing to us that night that is important will remember. clark was a hype man he was there <laughs> he was dressed as a banana because it was a it was a costume night right and i was wearing my fake tuxedo t-shirt and my tuxedo jacket that the sleeves are too short, so it didn't. You look like well, it was a, it was like a, it was like a two, it's like a too small, like John Candy esque yes. kind of deal. Yeah, <laughs> fat guy in a little coat. I had a top hat on. I still have that top hat. Not, I think Nafa gave me that, and we killed that shit. Mm-hmm. And that we drummer, made something out of nothing. That sure. drummer was there again, and he started showing off. When you set up your drums, he just got on stage, and started doing all his like his licks, like playing the crazy shit, like kind of like acting cool. And I was like, dude, you're a good drummer, dude. You don't have to prove nothing to this guy or me or you're awesome. And we just had such a good time that I should have known never to go back to that group of people, especially without Will there. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that third one. At least Will would have taken rough. care of shit at the other. Like He was like, I'm going to turn the monitors towards you guys. Right. So. <laughs> just so things work out. And of course, we talked about the 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 venture compound and prom date. Yep, yep, that was that really was good. Yeah, that's probably highlight. that's probably like my second, my probably either my first or second favorite show. I would yeah. think. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's it, it's it's tough. It's tough to say. Do like, you remember our heckler from the local? What was the, what was the name of the club? Local eight six two. Local six six two. Local local. Do you remember the heckler and what you did? I I don't think so. Okay, this is great. So we were like. It's our last song, everybody. And this guy at the bar screams out, thank God. And Ryan was there, you know, who introduced us. Ryan was there and he looked like glared at the guy. Like you got to look at him. And so we played our last song. And then when we got off the stage, I don't know if you told him, if he told you or you asked him, which guy was that? Which guy was that? And you took our set list and you walked up to the guy and you go, here, man. I thought you'd want to have this memento of the night. And the guy's like, uh, no. And you're like, but you don't, you loved us, right? And he's like, oh, okay. And then you walked away. <laughs> wow. No, I do not remember that. I must have been really pissed off at that guy. <laughs> I never so do that. That was so awkward. That was the gear. That was another gig where the place was full, but they were all at the bar right and like it was so fun that yeah was... nobody was like really watching oh yeah God. that's fine that whatever I, I must i mean but it's like you know i don't really have patience for someone who's just gonna like he, it's obvious he wants a t- like here's the attention you yep. ordered sir like yes. you know whatever like do, would you like to get up on stage hey. like everybody sees themselves in the limelight yep. from now on you know every now and again yep. right. 
Dude, we did it. We have talked about your never nothing. We've talked about the secret history of our band. We got the recording guide here with all my notes. This is so good. I'm glad you saved this. I save I save a lot of shit That's from our so Yeah, good. I needed some sort of like I needed some uh tactile uh memory recallers. <laughs> I needed to, to to kind of plumb the depths of the cobwebs of the, my mind. Uh, Sam is going to be back, folks, because Sam mm. and I, we've been talking about this forever. We wrote a song about a little movie called Pieces, which uh luckily we half released and now we're we're gonna fully release it like a like a sickening release in the back of an alley while we were in there listening to that music because marky plays bass and sings on that one so we're gonna talk about the film pieces we're gonna we're gonna freaking do it up so sam will be back and dude i just want to thank you for hanging out thank you for having me i feel very perfect girl for being Ooh. allowed uh allowed on dude i invited. i have seen parts of your body that prove to me you are the perfect girl <laughs> well nudie puzzle is my world <laughs> oh man you know our songs <laughs> i know that i know at least like two <laughs> lines of one song at this moment at this moment in time well folks really thank you for putting up with us just reminiscing about this band that we've done forever and we've committed to with these tattoos so we're going to keep going i think i've understood finally how self-indulgent uh this this episode really yeah. is because i'm sure yeah, the listeners don't have as much of a reference frame of reference for a lot of the things we've discussed no. as you and i do but no. but that's okay i guess that's the self-indulgence i'm, I'm gonna put you on the spot i'm gonna put you on the spot okay what song from your never nothing would you play at the end of this episode i have an idea of what you might say but what would you what would you go for? Uh, oh man, it's such a hard. It's just a hard one to 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 kind of put out there. I would say either Cat Snake being the ultimate closer. Yes, we have talked about it. Yeah, but if not Cat Snake, I think it needs to be and the Babysitter. All right, see, look at that. I was gonna say Ghost Pizza, mm. but I see, that's I, a good one too. That's I think uh, I think we'll go with Cat Snake. That's a perfect way to go for it, and it'll inspire people to start their own bands or ask us to stop. <laughs> talking about our band <laughs> i'll never nothing <laughs> i'll never nothing you bye folks goodbye
I wasn't a coward, I wouldn't even think this. You're an effortless forward. You're an effigenius if I wasn't a coward. I wouldn't even think this. You're effortless forward. You're an effigenius. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello, This is the Doom Show, use the email doomedmoviethon at gmail.com Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette.